Another day to live, another day to love, and another day to love. This is Mumsy, and today we're going to learn our lesson number two for Grade Seven Mathematics: The Kinds and Operations of Sets. In lesson one, you were able to identify and illustrate the notation and description of different sets. Today, you are to learn the kinds and operations of sets. So, in this lesson, you are expected to illustrate different kinds and operations of set and illustrate well-defined sets, subsets, universal sets, null set, cardinality of sets, union and intersection of sets, and the difference of two sets. As you read and understand the lesson, take note in finding answers to the following guide questions. 1. What are the kinds and operations on sets? 2. How will you find each operation on sets? And 3. How will you represent the operations on sets using Venn diagram? If you can still recall the images in lesson 1, you can observe that there are different sets depending on the kind of set you need to form. There are set of animals, set of shapes, set of transportation, and set of roots. In line with this, here are the different kinds of sets, starting with equivalent sets. Equivalent sets is when two sets that contain exactly the same number of elements. Again, for equivalent sets, same number of elements. For example, we have set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4. And set B is equal to M, A, P, H. Set A is equivalent to set B. In symbol, is A then equivalent to B. It's like an equal sign but way B, way B side, okay? Then both sets contain four elements. They are equivalent because they have four elements. For set A, you have one, two, three, four. And the elements are four. For set B, you have the elements M, A, T, H. And when you count those elements, there are also four. So once again, we are, when we are referring to equivalent sets, they have the same number of elements. Now, for the second kind of sets, we have the equal sets. Two sets that contain exactly the same. They have the same elements, okay? Earlier, when we're talking about equivalent, they have the same number of elements. But this time, when we're talking about equal sets, they have or contain exactly the same elements. For example, we have set A is equal to A, E, I, O, U. And set B is equal to E, O, I, U, A. So A is equal to B. In symbol, A is equal to B. So what are those? Both of the set, set A and set B, have an element of A, have an element of E, have an element of I, have an element of O, and have an element of U. Only, as you can observe in B, it is designated in different um, number or kumbaga na reshapol siya. Okay, so, but when you can still see it, same lang sila ng elements. Okay? So, now, the third kind of element is already been defined in our previous lesson. And that is the null or empty set. Once again, null or empty set is a set that has no element. In symbol, it can be braces or simple uh, like a letter O or a, or a circle then being uh, and there's a line in between okay that cut it just like what you can sew now or what can you see now okay so for example we have let the universal set B is equal to 2, 4, 6, and 8 now we need to find the set of A which is a multiple of 5 but looking at the universal set, there's no element or number that is multiple of 5 in the given universal set. 
That's why, since there's no multiple of 5 in the given universal set, then it is an empty or null set. Okay? So, another thing is the last kind of set, and that is the universal sets. Universal sets is denoted by U, the capital U, is the set of all possible elements of any set used in the problem. So, for example, let the universal set be U is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So, meaning to say, as you can see on the screen, these are the universal set, all the possible elements. You can find it in the universal set. So, when we need to use the listing method to represent each set, for instance, we have um, the in number 1, we are going to find out the multiple of 2. For number 2, we have the multiple of 4. For number 3, we have the multiple of 2 and x is prime. And for number 4, we have the multiple of 4 and x is prime. So, once again, as a review, when we are talking about prime numbers, those are numbers whose factors are itself and 1. So, when we're going to solve this, the set of um, x in which there are multiple of 2, we are going to look at the universal set. So, what are the universal uh, sorry what are the multiple of 2 in the universal set so we have 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 and 20 for number 2 what are the multiple of 4 that you can found out in the universal set and those are we have the 4 8 16 sorry 4 8 12 16 and 20 Next, we're looking for the multiple of 2, but a prime number, so we have 2, okay? And then, for number 4, multiple of 4 and prime number, so since none, we're going to answer null or empty sets. So, those are the three kinds of elements, the equivalent, equal, null or empty, and universal. After learning the different kinds of sets, you can now proceed to the different operations to perform in a set. So here are the operations and sets. First one is the union of sets. The union of sets A and B, written as A, capital U, B, is the set of elements that are members of A, or members of B, or members of both A and and B. Again, union is member of A, member of B, or members of both A and B. So how can we illustrate this? Let's have an let's have examples. For instance, we have set A is equal to A E I O U. Set B is equal to A B C D E. Set C is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And set D is equal to 3, 6, and 9. So for letter A, we need to find the union of A and B. So all we need to do is to list down all the elements that you can find in A and in B. And take note that if ever they have the same element, just write it once. Okay, you don't need to repeat that element or member. So, for A and B, or for the union of A and B, we have A, E, I, O, U, then B, C, and D. As you can observe, I didn't write A twice as well as E twice. I only put them once, okay? A, E, I, O, U, B, C, D. Now, looking at the union of C and D, what would be the union of C and D? That is, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 9. So, you don't need to write 1, 2, 3, 3, okay? Since there's uh, 2, 3, no. Just simply write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 9. So, that is the union of sets. Now, for the second operation of sets, we have the intersection of sets. The intersection of sets A and B written as A, then it's like a inverted 
um, U, so A, U, A intersection of B is a set of elements that are members of both A and B only, okay? Remember this, only members of both A and B. So, let's have examples. Set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Set B is equal to 2, 4, 6. And set C is equal to 1, 3, and 5. And 5. So all we need to find now is for letter A, the intersection of A and B. So look at the elements that are both members of A and B. You can find it at A, you can also find it at B. Okay, so the intersection of A and B is equal to 2, 4, and 6. Very good. Now, how about for letter B? We need to find the intersection of A and C. So, look at the elements that are members of both A and B. Okay, so that is, or those are, we have 1, 3, and 5. And for last uh, letter, we have the intersection of B and C. So, look at the elements or members that both uh, that are members of both A and B. Oh, wala silang magkakamukha, walang magkamukha. Okay, if there's none, if there's no element that they have in common, meaning to say, your answer would be a null or empty set. Okay, that's right. So now, let's have the third operation of set. We have here the complement of sets. So, the complement of set A written as A, then there's a there's an apostrophe is the set of all the elements in the universal set U that are not in set A. Remember this for the complement of sets. When we're referring to complement of set A, those are the elements that is not in set A. Now, when we're talking about the complement of set B, those are the elements that are not in set B. Okay? Tagalog, wala po sa set A o wala po sa set B. So, example, we have here, the universal set is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For set A, we have 1, 3, 5. And for set B, we have 1 and 5. Once again, for letter A, we need to find the complement of set A. So, in Tagalog, ano yung wala kay A? O, hindi mo makikita kay A. Okay, that is 2 and 4. You can find it at the universal set, but not in A. Okay, how about the complement of B? So, meaning to say, those are all the elements that you can find in the universal set, but not in set B. Okay, the correct answer is we have two, three, and four. Wow, that's nice. So, how about let's move on now with the fourth operation of set. We have now the difference of sets. So, the difference of A and B, for example, is a set of all elements found in A but not in B. Meaning to say, makikita daw po siya kay A. Pero hindi mo siya makikita kay B. Ano kaya iyon? So, pag binalintad natin, when we're talking about B minus A or simply the difference of B and A, that is set of all elements found in B but not in A. Okay? So, let's have an example. We have A minus B or simply read as uh, the difference of A and B. So, since nauna si A, ang magiging sagot dito ay mga elements na makikita kay A pero wala kay B. Okay, so that, oh, those are those are 4 and 5. Very good. Kasi sa si 6 and 7, you can see that at the set of B. Now, balik ta rin natin. How about if we are looking at the difference of B and A? So, makikita daw po kay B, pero hindi makikita kay A. Okay, that is 1, 8, and 9. Because, 
6 and 7 ay makikita nyo naman kay A. Okay? So, those are the four operations of sets. So, we have the union, intersection, complement, and difference of sets. For the last part of this discussion, we are now moving to the Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is an illustration that uses circles to show the relationships among things or finite groups of things. Circles that overlap have a commonality while circles that do not overlap do not share those traits. Venn diagrams help to visually represent the similarities and differences between two concepts. They have long been recognized for their usefulness as educational tools. Since the mid-20th century, Venn diagrams have been used as part of the introductory logic curriculum and in elementary level educational plans around the world. That is according to Will Canton 2020. Let us now define Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are very, are very useful in solving or showing the relationship between sets. The Venn diagram which consists of a rectangle represents the universal set and the circle or circles inside the rectangle to represent the set or sets being considered in the discussion. So we have here the figure 2.1 in which the region common to both A and B represents the intersection of A and B. And in figure 2.2, we have three overlapping circles. So the region common to A, B, and C represents the intersection of A and B and intersection of B and C. So once again, to represent two sets A and B, two overlapping circles are drawn inside a rectangle. So on the other hand, if there are uh, three representations, so we're going to use three circles or three overlapping circles. And again, as a reminder, if there is no element in common, there's not uh, then nothing is written in the region representing the intersection of A and B. So now, the question is, how do we illustrate the operations and sets using Venn diagram? For example, we have to draw a Venn diagram and shade the region represented by each set. So for letter A, we have the union of A and B. For letter B, we have the intersection of A and B. For C, we have the difference of A and B. And for D, we have the difference of B and A. So, for our solution, as you can see, A, B, and the middle part is being shaded in color pink. So, it's up to you what color uh, we're going to use. So, there's a rectangle, the, uni the universal set inside the rectangle. And then, since this is a union, A and B are being shaded. Okay. Now, looking at num uh, letter B, we have the intersection of A and B. Since we are only referring to intersection, all we need to shade is the middle part. Okay. Next, for letter C, we have the difference of A and B. Found in A but not in B. That's why since uh, I read... A first, so the shaded part is only in A. Okay? So, on the other hand, for letter D, the shaded part is only on B because that is the difference of B and A. Also, another example is we have the complement of a set. When we define complement earlier, uh, we, we defined it as those elements that are not in A or not in B. So, in this case, you can see that the elements that are not in A ay nandun siya sa loob ng rectangle. So, that is the shaded part because we are referring to the complement of set A. Okay? So, same with, for example, you have to know the complement of set B. So, of course, the shaded part is outside the circle. And for the last part, you can see here the figure 2.3 or sets A and B that have no common 
element. Okay? So, this special case is being shown in that figure. And that is what we call the disjoint sets. Okay? So, since there's no common element for them. So, in totality, we have three topics in this video. We have the kinds of sets, operations of sets, and Venn diagram. So, hopefully, you learned something today once again. And thank you for listening. God bless!